There are hundreds of add-ons inside Adobe Express, and it may be hard to figure out which ones are gonna help you as you design inside Adobe Express. Well, I wanna cover five of my favorites that I highly recommend you check out. Content hierarchy is crucial to making your content easier to read and less overwhelming. When we look at this example, there is not enough hierarchy, everything's in all caps, which actually slows down our reading flow. So if you're posting things on a mobile device, social media, et cetera, and you're trying to get people to read about your products or services, having everything in all caps is going to slow down the reading flow and it's going to make people feel overwhelmed so they will move on and there goes your sale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this bad example over here that I created and we're gonna go to add-ons and we're gonna either, if you don't have this already, you can click on discover and search for attention insight because I already have it. I'm going to go to your add-ons and I'm gonna click on attention insight. It's gonna bring this window on the far right and what I'm gonna do is you can select whichever test you're going to do. For now, let's just say it's going to be a post and then I'm going to click on test design. Now this is going to use AI to start to process and analyze our content and give us some heat map results. Now we have a heat map result. And what this result tells you is that over here, the brighter reds or warmer hues are more attention. Now, what is important is that when you look at the size of these, they're almost the same. So your viewers or people who are seeing your graphics are not going to know which one to look at first, and it's going to overwhelm our brains. Sometimes we notice this, sometimes we don't, but this is where it's going to really help you with your content. Now you can click on test areas of interest, and then you can select these and say, this is going to be my heading and then click on the plus icon. It's going to calculate a percentage of visibility. And then if I go and select this as well and try to say, hey, this is just gonna be text, let's see what it gives us. So it's a 38%. So it actually gives us the calculations, which is really helpful. So now let's take a test from a much better design that has more of a hierarchy and not this crazy all caps that we have here. Okay, so let's run this test again. With this one, I made it a lot easier. The word introducing doesn't have to be so big because we wanna introduce this new product. And then we can have our supporting body text, which should be smaller. And now you can see more structure. Now we could keep or remove this vertical text. Sometimes vertical text can be a little difficult to read, but for now, we're gonna leave this over here and run Attention Insight again. Now, when we get the heat map results, you can see that the size of this is larger than the text in the bottom. So we can make a few more adjustments if we wanted. I could, staying on brand, let's say we could make this type a little bit more bold or a little bit larger and shorten down this information. So that way the eye goes from the top because we want to introduce this new flavor or this product and then they see the image, then they'll go in and read a little bit more information. And you you can run the new test to kind of see what percentage you have, but this is really helpful if you're not really sure how to structure your content with proper hierarchy so that it makes it easier for people to read your information. Since we're talking about content hierarchy, I want to pause for a moment to tell you my high rise content strategy. And this is a strategy that helps you think more strategically how to structure your content. So when we have these beautiful high rises at the very top, you always think the CEOs and the most important people hang out at the very top of a high rise. So think of this as your headlines and the headlines is where you're going to have your larger text. It's direct, it's focused, and that's what's going to capture your attention. Then as we move further down on the high rise, we have like the VPs and management, the higher ups that support the CEOs. And these are your sub headlines. So they're still larger compared to the rest of the body text, but they're not as large as a headline. So you're starting to build that structure for your content and they're still short and direct. And then the rest of the team supporting the mission is usually around the middle of a high rise. And think of this as your body text. You can have a little bit more information that will support your sub headline and your headlines, but you don't want it to be 
too much text. And last but not least is the smallest area, which is the disclaimers, which if you think about this, this is kind of like the garage in a high rise. No one really hangs out there, but it's essential for people parking. So disclaimers can be essential for certain types of content. Now you want to make sure that you can still read it and abide by whatever regulations as far as the font type size, but it doesn't have to be large, but if you need it to be legible enough, you can have that there and try to make it as small as possible to still stay compliant, but you want to make sure it doesn't take away from your design. So now you know how to use my content high rise strategy to structure your content. Now let's talk about the importance of having accessible content and how you can use Adobe Express to check for accessibility. Go to add-ons again. And what I'm going to do is since I already have the save, I'm going to go to your add-ons and I'm going to look for color blindness simulator. If you don't have this, you can search for it. Then I'll see this window on the far right and I'm actually going to open it in external previewer. So it's a little bit bigger. And now I can go through each simulation and see how my type changes. Now I have an example on the left, which isn't really accessible. You don't want to have a light color background with light color text. Even if you don't have a color blindness, it's harder to read, especially with smaller text. As I continually test this, you can see that on the left side, it's harder to read than compared to the right side, where I actually have a lot more contrast between the black text and the peach background color. This is going to be really helpful so that you can gauge if your content is accessible or not. Once you're done testing, you can close on this X icon and make any modifications that you need after running this test. There's another really great add-on called Contrast Checker. And I have this open here as well on my add-ons already. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and find it, click on Contrast Checker. And this is going to actually give me parameters to see if we pass between the foreground and background color. What is really helpful is that I can actually just use the eyedrop over here and then go over here. And I can already start to see some of the results once I toggle this on. And let's select if I select white here, you'll start to see how the contrast ratio already is failing. So this is a really great way to use a contrast checker if you want to make sure that there's enough contrast between your foreground and your background. So foreground in this terms would actually be the text. So I should have done it the flip way around. So if I was to use this black text with this background, you can see that I actually passed. But it's a really great tool an add-on that I highly recommend for you to start testing and making sure that you have enough contrast ratio to use this. And what's really great is that it actually breaks it down whether it's good for large text, regular text, and graphics and objects. So highly, highly recommend adding this one as well. Now let's talk about how you can be a lot more efficient by using this particular add-on that's going to save you a lot of time. Let's say you have a newsletter and you have to update this to the new year and a new month. If you have several pages, what I just did is I just duplicated the same page, but you imagine having to duplicate and just change every single year and every single month, it gets tedious. So let me show you how you can save a ton of time by using find and replace. I have my add-ons open and I'm gonna click on find and replace. Again, if you don't have this, you can search for it under the discover tab by accessing this over here on your far left. I'm gonna click on find and replace and now I can add the text that I want to replace. So it's gonna be September and I wanna replace this with January. Since I have it in all caps, I wanna make sure that I type this in in all caps and then click on replace all. And now you see how it did it so fast for every single page. And I can do the same thing for the year 2024. And now we're going to do 2025 replace all boom. This is going to be such a time saver. And I absolutely love it. It's simple. It's direct, but it saves you time. Video backgrounds may be my favorite add on to date inside Adobe Express. Let me show you what we can do and then I'm going to go back and break it down so you can create this yourself. We all love hacks, right? So let me show you this amazing hack in Adobe Express. 
So what I have here is this animated gradient background, which you can see here on the far right. And I have a video that I uploaded. I really didn't like the background. And so I removed the background, added a graphic over here, added my text, and then added this beautiful animated background using a gradient. So let's go through the steps on how you can create this. To save a bit on time, I went ahead and uploaded my video. To upload your videos, you can go to the far left, click on upload, find the video file that you wanna upload, upload and then add it to Adobe Express. Just keep in mind that the longer the video is and depending on your internet bandwidth, it may take a little longer to process. Once the video is here, I'm gonna go click remove background. Adobe Express is gonna do its magic and then once the background is removed, all I will have is the cutout of myself. Okay, finally finished doing the cutout and I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit over here to the bottom. I can always resize this and I really don't mind that my curls look a little off because this is what's really great is that I did have some colorful backlighting, but with a gradient and the animation, you cannot tell. Next, what I did is so that I could easily access my brand colors, I went into elements and I added a shape, just any shape. And then what I did is I selected each shape and then I went and made sure I had my brand kit selected and created four different colors here that I wanted to use for my gradient. Next, what you wanna do is go to add-ons. And if you don't have video backgrounds, search for it in the search field. I already have this installed. So once I click on that, I'm going to see this preview on the far right. There's different options here. Now, I particularly love the gradients. You have a little bit more control over here. Patterns are great. You can definitely explore all of these. Just keep in mind too much movement may make some people a little nauseous. So keep that in mind. We're going to focus on the gradient. So here is where having these colors handy is easy. Click on each of these colors and then use the eyedropper tool to start replacing the colors. What I'm doing is I'm kind of replacing it with a similar colors over here because I did like how this was animated and then letting this start to populate little by little. And I'm already loving how these colors are looking. Next, what do you want to do is you can define the size. So if you already knew the size of your page here, you can change the size, but I'm going to keep it as is. Then you can designate the speed of the animation. You don't want it to look like you're on fire unless that is the intention. So we're going to do, let's say a five or a four speed. Let's go with four. And then you can give your video duration. So I know my video is around six seconds. I'm going to add that to my document. It's going to render. And then once it's done, I see my gradient over here. Now I can extend this easily into my page here and then drag this to the back. Now I don't need these graphics over here. This was just temporary. Now what I can do is go access my brand kit and access all these illustrations that I had done like in the initial video over here where I had this design element that I actually brought in from Illustrator and added that into a brand kit. Then all I did was add some text and added this text over here so that we ended up with that last result. There is so much that Adobe Express is constantly adding that I don't want you to miss out. So make sure that you subscribe so you could stay up to date with the latest tutorials, insights, tips, and strategies that we share in this channel. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.